Hello everyone, this is Money Mom. Welcome to the channel. Today I want to chat with you guys about nine old-fashioned money-saving ideas we need to bring back in 2024. Let's get started and talk about it. And I'm going to first do a confession. I don't do most of these. I, it would be good if I did. I'm not going to make an excuse, but I don't. First one is, and I don't definitely do this, Mending your own clothes. Well, a lot of my clothes don't have a lot of buttons on them, but I don't need, and I don't need to hem pants. But this is a sewing kit for my dear beloved mother. She used to use this all the time. This is from the early 70s. Beautiful thread in here, gorgeous. And I'm not giving it to anyone because I'm just keeping it in the family. But people could mend clothes if they needed to, rather than saying, oh, this is getting old. Maybe mend it and make it look like brand new. My mother used to take really good care of our clothes. Also, I know this might sound like it's not mending, but hear me out. Now, I work from home Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Let's say I'm home and nobody's gonna see me anyway, and I have a shirt that has a spot on it. Well, you know what, no one's gonna see me anyway. I'm just at the house. Why do I need to throw away that shirt? If it's still perfectly good, I can wear that rather than just always having to get something new. So that's number one. Number two, something we did back in the 70s, 60s and 70s a lot is we would barter with our neighbors and help our neighbors out. One neighbor was good. Like my mother did a lot of people's hair. That was something. And then the neighbors would come over and help another neighbor work on their car or do something in the yard. So-and-so would shovel someone's driveway. You know, everybody helped each other out as a community. Everyone has a different set of skills and they would use their strength to help someone out and they would kind of barter back and forth that was really wonderful and I'd love to see that come back number three odd jobs even as a kid I was always wanting to make extra money as a young child I would go around to my neighbors and say hi I'm wanting to earn extra money what can I do and they would give me a job like pulling weeds I painted a fence for a neighbor you know I would do all sorts of things maybe some babysitting uh, bringing back odd jobs. Now, yes, people are doing things on this side to make money, and that's great, but I mean, there's so many people out there that maybe they can't do something themselves, and it could be something small. Maybe they need help with it. You know, it could be, say, someone has a bad back and they really want to weed their garden. Maybe weed their garden for them. And, I, and also with this, doing these odd jobs, not charging a whole lot. That way, it's a win-win. You make a little extra money. You help someone out. Maybe there's something they could do for you. Things like that. So, odd jobs. Number four, instead of just replacing, and I'm going to give you an example of this, repairing. You know, use things until they basically fall apart. For example, my microwave that is not attractive if you saw the inside of it it's clean but it's not attractive at all it might be nice if i got a pretty microwave but guess what it still works so i'm keeping it also i have this fitness watch that a friend gave me and the band on it it kind of this part broke off well guess what the other day i left it in the restroom and you can see it has a broken band somebody turned it in at the service desk now if this was a really nice brand new fitness watch they may have brought it home with them, but because it has this ripped up band, I can still use it. I just kind of turn it around and don't use that part of the band, and I attach it to a different part. It still works perfectly fine. I'm not going to go get a new fitness watch. I had a friend that said, hey, you should get a fitness watch that has even more features. thought, this one is fine. It tells me how many hours I'm sleeping, tells me how many steps I'm taking. I don't need anything fancy. Yes, the band isn't the best. But I could always get a new band if I needed to. It works perfectly fine. So keeping what you have rather than thinking we always need to have something new and we always need to replace. Number five, leftovers, leftovers, leftovers. Hey, I sometimes can get tired of eating leftovers if I make a big amount. There's been times I've made tons of spaghetti, chili, and I'm like, oh, another one. But you know what? It's good. It's nourishing. And why not eat it up? For example, for Easter, we had this huge ham. I've made several different meals with that ham. And so just you can do all sorts of things. Instead of just throwing everything away, you know, serve it up. Or maybe next time, don't make as much if you think you're going to waste it. Okay, N number six, growing up in the 70s, I mentioned it before, smaller portions and meat was not the main show in the meal. The side dishes were. My mother did not give us a whole chicken breast. She got half a chicken breast if we were having that. So meat was only a small portion of the meal. And then all the sides came in next, okay? So that was with meat. 
Number seven, garden. We did have a vegetable and fruit garden. I remember we had rhubarb in Minnesota. Oh my gosh, rhubarb pie, rhubarb jam. I love rhubarb and I used to eat it raw. I know that sounds crazy, but I just love rhubarb. Do any of you like rhubarb? It's hard to get here in Texas. So if any of you want to travel from Minnesota where I'm from and come visit me and bring me some rhubarb, that'd be great. Okay, so that's number seven. Number eight, this is another big thing. Pretty much only buy what you need and wants minimally. People seem to always be out shopping. Growing up, we didn't go shopping that often, you know, except for a few times a year. We were not always at the store. We made do with what we had and we took care of it. Now, granted, things were made better back then. You know how people say, you know, hey, things aren't made like they used to be. There is a lot of truth to that. But, you know, my mom used to iron and press clothes and mend them. So it looked, a lot of stuff looked brand new. And as a matter of fact, I have a jacket from my mother from the late 70s that we have that honestly looks like it is brand new. It's because my parents always took good care of everything. So that's another thing. And also with that buying needs, I'll tell you this story really quickly. My dad told me that growing up, because there were nine kids, that his mother would give him hand-me-downs of shirts from his brothers and mend them and make them look nice, maybe put a patch on it, things like that. And that would be like a new shirt to him. And they would all get underwear, socks, and t-shirts for Christmas. They were needs, and that's what they got. So they got needs like clothing and things like that rather than a bunch of toys. He said they made up their own games and toys, you know, things you know, like of that nature. Okay, and then last but not least, conserving electricity. And so you didn't use your dryer all the time. You did use a clothesline. You know, also you made sure not to keep lights on. You found ways to conserve electricity. I know there's a lot of old fashioned ways to save money. I do some of these things. For example, I don't know if I mentioned this one on the list, but one of them was cooking from scratch. I don't know if I mentioned that, but if not, that is something that's why I put these little the flour here, the baking powder, salt. I make a lot of things from scratch. So that is the one thing I do to save money is I cook and bake a lot and that saves a lot. And I love to figure out how much things cost per meal. For example, I made some bread the other day that I saw at a local coffee shop that was $3.50 per slice. I could make an entire loaf for $3.50. So you can really save if you take time scratch cooking and it doesn't take as much time as people think. These are just some old fashioned ideas. There may be a few on here that I'm doing, but I know I could definitely improve. I want to hear from you. What are some old fashioned money saving ideas you think we should bring back in 2024? That's all I have to say for now. I love you. I appreciate you. And I sure hope to see you on tomorrow morning's video. Bye bye now.